I just want to welcome one of our great global citizens and, and someone I'm, I'm very proud to call a friend, Dr. Vandana Shiva. Andre, you and I were all, we were all there at uh, the Paris summit on climate. And I remember we said, it doesn't matter what the governments will do, but we planted a garden of hope and regeneration. But it's at that summit that Bill Gates was walking around with the heads of state. And he was offering the solutions. And the solutions that were announced then with Zuckerberg and him were geoengineering and genetic engineering. This new paper was published in Medium. It's called Software to Swallow. Impossible foods should be called impossible patterns. And Bill Gates is a very big finder of this. As a Silicon Valley, this fake burger full of toxics is riding on Silicon Valley money, including Bill Gates' money. And I'd just like to read this to you. Impossible funds, food should really be called impossible patterns. It's not food, it's software, intellectual property. 14 patterns, 14 patterns to fake your food when we could just grow good seed and good soil and eat the best of food and have a, a very healthy gut and a lot of health. They need 14 patterns. In fact, in each bite of Impossible Burger, with over 100 additional patterns pending for animal proxies from chicken to fish. It's iFood, the next killer app. Just download your flavor. It's a food operating system, a predecessor perhaps to a merger with Microsoft MS Food. The business model is already etched in Silicon Valley. Licensed core technology, protein, synth protein synthesis. If you're a vegetarian, eat plants. Why, as a vegetarian or a vegan, do you want to go to a fake burger which makes it look like there's blood seeping through it and makes it look like meat? If continents were invaded in us colonialism, our bodies are being invaded and being turned into controlled objects. And the impossible burger, um, well, the ingredients, as you know, are genetically modified soya, but then also the processing is all genetically modified yeast. So it's really a lump of GMO. Don't eat your pulses and your dals. Eat GMO soya. And the vegans are celebrating it. When they should be fighting for real food with the knowledge that what you eat becomes you. And if you're eating GMO ingredients, processed through GMO microbes, you are really eating toxic food at the highest level. And I do think we need a campaign. Andre, we need a campaign in Regeneration International that not only should this be tested, but if any hazard is found, it should be totally banned. So there are three ways in which the, the tech barons are continuing the work of the poison cartel. At a time when the movements were starting to say, keep your poisons away, Europe has just passed a law, farm to fork, 50% reduction in pesticides. India has just banned 27 pesticides. So here are movements trying to get rid of po poison, saying we'll have a poison-free food and farming systems. That is precisely when they are giving a new boost to the poison cartel. First and foremost, by talking about digital agriculture as an agriculture without farmers. Now, you're a farmer, we farm. We know true farming is farming of, for, with care. We need more eyes on the land. We need more hands on the land. We need more biodiversity and friends on the land as you keep showing friends from your farm and your orchard. They want farming without farmers. They want giant sized monocultures with surveillance drones and spraying Roundup from the skies. How does this come into the role of the digital barons? First, they're financing the digitalization of agriculture, expecting it to be inevitable. These, this is likely the appeal for Bill Gates, their Uber investor, impossible foods, fake food, Bill Gates, go together. And I don't think it's an accident, Andre, that even while hunger grew during the pandemic, 
according to the World Food Program, 130 million people will die of hunger. 300,000 will die of hunger every day. And even while this was happening, farms weren't able to sell what they'd grown. And all you needed for any responsible, compassionate society or government is to put the two together. See, here are hungry people. We're going to order truckloads to pick up fruits and vegetables and grain from the farmers and make sure no one goes hungry. I believe the reason there has been a deliberate collapse of the supply chain is because the digital barons are waiting to force this down our throats. And that is why we in Navdanya, we in Regeneration International need to create the next level of freedom through food freedom. It doesn't matter what it will take. We have to grow gardens everywhere. We have to have organic farms everywhere. And as you and I talk so often, if they say this can't be done and that can't be done with a fake law, like a salt law that made it illegal for us to have salt and Gandhi marched to the sea, said nature gives it for free. We need it for our survival. We will continue to make salt. Let us say nature gives us the soil and the seed. We as organic farmer know how to grow real food. We as scientists know that that's the only food worth eating. We will not allow you to come in the way between the earth and our food. The digital barons are creating the most violent, brutal system. Cooking up laws, including twisting science, twisting medical science, twisting the science of biology of health and the ecology of health, and twisting also agriculture. Um, I think this is the moment where we all need to understand that at the end of the day, each of us has the power to know truth and we have the power to stand with truth and against dishonesty, falsehood, lies. And at this point, the digital barons are the spin masters. And it's not just they are that they're harvesting the COVID crisis for becoming richer. Think of it. They control all of the communication. If they want to put out a fake message, Facebook, YouTube, and if they want to silence, you know, over the years, over 20, 30 years of fighting GMOs, we watched how the poison cartel scientists silenced every good scientist. Eric Serralini, the top work on glyphosate and GMOs leading to cancer. He's been absolutely vindicated, not just by the WHO, which said it's a probable carcinogen, but the hundreds of thousands of cases in the United States, many ruling against Bayer and Monsanto, saying, yes, it's a known carcinogen. So the silencing that was done on the lies about GMOs is a silencing being done about what is health, what is immunity, how do we deal with epidemics, and how do we not deal with epidemics? We don't deal with epidemics by creating a surveillance state. We don't deal with epidemics by allowing the rubber barons to not just control our agriculture, but now our food through bad food, force feeds us with bad food. This is a crime against humanity. Today, more people are dying of chronic diseases created by the industrial food system than are dying of COVID. 1.9 million are dying annually because of diabetes, a metabolic disorder, totally related to industrial food. Then look at the data of the COVID infection. 0.5%, 1% mortality. But if you have diabetes, it's 9.2%. Most people who've died have died because of pollution of our food or pollution of the air. This is what happened in New York. Why are the deaths among the black Americans higher? Because A, they live in polluted areas. Two, they are forced to eat junk food because of poverty. They live in food deserts. New Orleans, which is the cancer ally. Bo all the people who died in Bhopal were victims of the 1984 gas tragedy. So we are talking of the poison cartel having poisoned our bodies, created sickness, and now a coronavirus comes and our bodies have been made vulnerable and more people die. We know 
that organic food builds immunity. We know biodiversity builds immunity because in our gut microbes, the trillions of microbes, they need different diets. And that different diets come from biodiversity of plants. So all the people who think they are being good by shifting to plant-based impossible burger, they should realize they are cheating their own gut. They're cheating their own bodies. They're lying to themselves. I was thinking one more thing we need to do is if industrial agriculture takes 10 units of energy to produce one unit of food, when ecological agriculture take, take one unit of energy and give you 10 units of food, because nature works, living systems work against entropy, mechanical systems create entropy. Factory farming, you gave the figures, 100 un uh, uh, units to one unit. If add to factory production, industrial production, factory processing, huge energy intensive systems, the level of entropy creation, I would imagine it's a thousand units of energy input to produce one unit of bad deceitful food. This lie, you know, if we are what we eat and everything is food, then the digital barrier starting to invade our food systems and invade our body through the patents like Microsoft and Google, all of them are in the race. They're invading the human body now with fake food and data mining. We've seen what disastrous results colonization did. Australia, if only they had let the Aboriginal people guide how the settlers should live. The forest fires wouldn't have been devastating like they've been in Australia. They devastated the indigenous knowledge and the indigenous culture. If 200, 300 years of colonization in Australia, 500 years of colonization of the Americas, few hundred years of colonization of India have ruined our land, the earth, our farming, and our health. Can you imagine? You won't even need a decade of our food and agriculture in the hands of the digital barons to render this earth totally incapable of supporting human life. These are things that democratic societies do. We choose the food we eat. We choose the communicating systems. We choose the technologies we adopt. So we have to really be very alert to the new dictatorship. And the new dictatorship is a strange dictatorship because you know, the first colonialism needed slaves. This dictatorship, wants to get rid of large numbers of people, throw away people, 90%, we won't need you. You're not fit into the digital world. And then for the rest who'll be in the digital world, we are the slaves from whom extraction happens. Amazing system. We need far more economic analysis of what this system is about. We need far more political analysis. We need far more ecological analysis. And we definitely need a lot of our energies to go into defending the systems that have tried, tested, proven, strengthening them, and through Satyagraha, refusing to allow them to un be undermined. And I think the word you used is the plural, systems. What we're seeing at the moment is this ultimate Cartesian reductionism and single-mindedness in the way that we're being controlled. What we have to do is that word flowering, go the other way and, and have a diversity of solutions. It's not just one size fits all. And the more diverse we can make it, the more robust we make it and the harder we make it for them to control us. Diversity is resilience. We know that in ecology, we know that in life. And that is why there is a fear of diversity. There's a fear of life. You know, I'm an eco-feminist. And for me, eco-feminism means you just recognize the earth is alive. And you recognize women aren't a dumb second sex. We are equal human beings. And the earth is very, very much alive. She's Gaia. Just that simple recognition is what we need to bring back. And at the time where this is growing, all over the world, young people are throwing anthropocentrism out. They're throwing racism out. At that point, the digital barons are trying to bring back a crude Cartesian logic. 
a crude idea of data as the new oil. In my book, Oneness versus One Percent, I have gone through all the diversities of intelligences in the world, the intelligences in the plant, the intelligences in the microbe, the intelligences in our gut. It's not for nothing we call the gut the second brain. If our second brain is in the gut and it, it thinks through food to call artificial intelligence as superior knowledge, when you're destroying that intelligence that gives us health and life is actually the ultimate Cartesian dumbing down of humanity. And artificial intelligence is merely me mechanical learning by a mech machine. This cannot substitute life. Life is pluralistic, diverse intelligence adapting. I was just walking in our garden and I'm seeing our pumpkin put out its tendrils, looking for the next support. A machine can't give you that instruction. So the choice right now for us is Will we be intelligent with all of life that's intelligent in amazing interconnectedness, growing good food, eating good food, building good community, or will we be dumped down into either extermination for the majority and slavery for the few? To me, either of those options are not accept acceptable because these are complex systems and you need complex knowledge and engineering solutions are not the way to deal with complex self-organized living systems. While we, while we see these billionaires trying to take over, in many ways, we are winning. We are changing the system. If we look at organic agriculture, you know, all around the world, we're losing millions of farmers, but in organic agriculture, we're growing around 200,000 new farmers a year. If you want to talk about my country, where they're talking about geoengineering, for the Great Barrier Reef. I learned today that our main scientific organization, the CSIRO, finally is supporting regenerative agriculture as the way, not just to restore the, the soils, but also now as a way of drawing down carbon dioxide and reversing climate change. Now, these were, how can you say, these are all battles that we've been fighting for a long time, but in many ways, we are winning these battles. And I think that's the really important thing to get across that by, you know, this is why I love the idea of, of oneness in your book, by all of us working together, we can win. And the fact is we are winning. We've just got to step up this fight and get bring more of us into it. Absolutely. And the lovely thing about this COVID crisis, it has brought, made it very clear that the climate issue is not separate from the biodiversity issue. The biodiversity issue is not separate from healthy systems of growing food, healthy food. So these interconnections are being made by more and more people. And because the digital barons have now invaded into our bodies as the new colony, it's from our bodies we build the alternative of working with the earth to grow organically, regenerating the soil, but not just, you know, to me, the reason when we founded the regeneration movement that it's so powerful is here we have a degeneration system, degenerated minds of mechanical thought, degenerating economies, creating poverty, degenerating the planet's living ecosystems, degenerating our food and created, creating disease and here, is regeneration and all it needs is a partnership with biodiversity and the soil and the seed. And we regenerate health, we regenerate the climate, we regenerate democracy, we regenerate economy. This is the time. The rubber barons will use all the force they can, but what my lessons from our freedom movement have been, force used with brute power can never be strong enough against the force of life and love in interconnectedness.